Good afternoon, everyone. As I am Seitaro Nakagawa from Chiba University. And thank you, Chair Passant, and all the organizers and board members of ESDL, SID, and JSID for giving me this opportunity to talk here. So today I will talk about uh, Staphylococcus aureus, virulent PSM alpha peptides induced keratinocyte alarming release to castrate our 17 dependent skin information. There's no COI to keep this close. So before starting to talk about my research, uh, I want to briefly introduce about Kisaragi Juku. As Dr. Uji has introduced it, uh, GSID uh, hold our uh, Kisaragi Juku every February uh, since 2010. And I attended uh, last February uh, this Kisaragi Juku and had a great time with Japanese leading researchers and also young dermatologists from, our, from the same generation. And we learned a lot of things through well-conducted programs such as uh, group discussions, oh, sorry, <laughs> right, right. group discussions and postal sessions and lectures from Japanese leading researchers. And unfortunately, we, don't, we didn't have a time to drink on a beach in the daytime, but every, every night after lectures, we had drinking parties at the room. And in, this, yes, and, and in this opportunity, you know, we talked about our current works and our careers and our future dreams. And yes, of course, uh, all the participants, including lecturers. And it is usually difficult for us to have this kind of time, but those special occasion and opportunity enables us to open our hearts to each other, and we can talk very uh, vigorously with each other. But, uh, and unfortunately, um, I was awarded with Kisaragi Award 2017. And this is not just because my performance at programs, but my extraordinary contribution in these drinking parties. And <laughs> when I get so excited and I talk to my friends, and so vigorously like this, I was scolded by Dr. Takahashi twice a day in that way. So anyway. Uh, we really enjoyed the Kisarawaki Juku, and this is a really good experience for us all. So let's move on to the research talk. Uh, research talk. Okay, the link between atopic dermatitis and staph aureus colonization in skin has been discussed for a long time. And our team have recently established staph aureus uh, epicutaneous, staph aureus colonization mouse model, which means Staph aureus is colonized on the surface of the skin and reported that data toxin, oh sorry, data toxin derived from staph aureus induced mast cell degranulation, thus induced TS2 type skin formation, including IgE production. However, the role of other cells and cytokines in this model remains unknown. So we try to reveal, uh, to really identify and reveal the pathways to clarify how staph aureus acts as pathobiont in skin. So MIT-88 is a signal transducer in the interleukin-1 receptor family to induce pro-inflammatory cytokines. And it was previously reported that in subcutaneous staph aureus injection mouse model, MIT-88 nokama showed larger skin ulcers compared to white eye mice indicating MIT-88 has an important protective role in subcutaneous staph aureus infection. However, the role of MIT-88 against staph aureus on the surface of the skin remains unknown. Therefore, we, try, we first try to examine whether MIT-88, especially MIT-88 in keratinocytes, is involved in the skin formation of epicutaneous staph aureus colonization. We focus on keratinocytes because keratinocytes is a first line physical and chemical barrier against external environments, including bacteria. So this is a skin over method. After we shave the dorsal skin of mice, we attach the indicate number of live staph aureus or treated with PBS and cover the glucivory for seven days. And on day seven, we remove the occlusive dressing and score skin information according to skin disease score and took skin samples for further analysis. Okay. 
so they don't work now. Can you proceed? This doesn't work. Sorry. Could the AB um, guys proceed, move to the next slide, please? Sorry, this phrase is, this doesn't work now. Can you? All right, thank you. So this is the result. As you see here, white time mice show severe skin inflammation after seven days epicutaneous sufferers colonization. And histologically, white time mice showed acanthotic epidermis and edematous dermis with massive inflammatory cell infiltration. However, surprisingly, contrary to subcutaneous injection model, skin inflammation was diminished in myediated knockout mice. And importantly, keratinocyte-specific myediated knockout mice also showed significantly decreased skin inflammation compared to white eye mice. These results suggest that myediated in keratinocytes was essential for inducing the skin inflammation of epicutaneous sulfurous infection. Next, we tried to identify the upstream signaling of myediated in this model. And we focused on iron receptor family because I1, especially I1 alpha secreted by keratinocyte, is known to, known to be important for, uh, for various skin inflammation. And moreover, recent transcriptome analysis revealed that transcription of I36 is increased in the skin of atopic dermatitis patients. So to address the upstream of my 18 skin in this model, we focus on I1 and I36. So first we try to check the role of I36 alpha, whose role in allergic skin disease is not well understood. And this slide I show the fluorescent immunohist chemistry of staph RLs in red and I36 alpha in green, like this. And staph RLs colonize only on the surface of the skin and did not invade into the dermis. And I36 alpha in green is highly expressed in the skin in the keratinocyte in the upper epidermis of staph RLs uh, colonized white time and skin. While only slight expression can be seen in keratinocyte specific myediated knockout mice and whole body myediated knockout mice. We also checked the same method uh, in I1 alpha. And as you see here, in red, I1 alpha was highly expressed in keratinocytes in sapphires colonized white time mice, while only slight expression can be seen in keratinocyte specific myediated knockout mice and whole body myediated knockout mice. So these results suggest that both I36 and I1 may be involved in this model. To further confirm the role of I1 and I36, we compared four groups white eye mice and I1 receptor knockout mice, and I36 receptor blocking antibody injected white eye mice, which lack I36 function, and I36 receptor blocking antibody injected I1 receptor knockout mice, which lack both I1 and I36 functions. <laughs> and this is the result. As you see here, I1 receptor knockout mice and I36 receptor antibody uh, blocking antibody injected white eye mice showed moderately reduced skin inflammation compared to white type mice. On the other hand, I1 receptor antibody injected I1 receptor knockout mice showed remarkably reduced skin inflammation compared to white type mice. So these results suggest that I1 and I36 are involved in the skin inflammation of epicutaneous sulfurous colonization. So this is a short summary. Both I1 and I36 are essential for inducing the skin inflammation of epicutaneous sulfurous colonization. Next, we try to find a key uh, cytokine in the downstream of my data signaling. And we focus on I17, because I1 is known to be important for I17 producing cell differentiation. And I17 is also imp involved in early onset pediatric AD. So first, we check the protein levels of I17 in the skin tissue of our model. And as you see here, uh, I, I17, uh, both I7A and F were uh, increased in the skin of Staphylococcus coronis white eye mice. On the other hand, uh, the expression of I17A and F, the protein levels of I17A and F were 
also significantly decreased in keratinocyte specific mediated knockout and I started six receptor antibody blocking, uh, blocking receptor antibody uh, injected iron receptor knockout mice. So we also checked the source of R17 in this model. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the data from the skin of white eye mice uh, colonized with staph aureoles. And R17 producing cells in a model is TCL gamma delta intermediate positive dharma gamma delta T cells and TCL gamma delta negative and TCL beta negative in NATO lymphoid cells. To further confirm the importance of I-17 in this model, we compared I-17 A and F double knockout mice and white eye mice. And as you see here, I-17 A and F double knockout mice show significantly decreased skin inflammation compared to white eye mice. So this result suggests that I-17 was important in the skin formation of epicutaneous staph aureus colonization. And finally, we tried to identify the virulence factor against keratinocytes that induced the skin formation of epicutaneous staph aureus colonization. Among many toxins, we focused on cytotoxic toxins. So because both I-1 and I-36 is believed to be stored in keratinocytes, and they work after they're released from keratinocytes. And to address this, we, we performed in vitro experiments. We stimulated uh, primary keratinocytes with culture supernatants from various staph virus strains. And this time we used LAC wild type strain and various toxin mutant LAC strains. And we measured I1 alpha and I6 alpha released from keratinocytes. And this is the result. As you see here, culture supernatant from LAC wild type, but not that from PSM alpha deficient strain uh, induced I1 alpha release from keratinocytes. And this I1 alpha release was correlated with cytotoxicity, which means the cell death uh, measured by LDH assay. So the similar, uh, similar results were observed about I36 alpha uh, detected by Western blood and culture supernatant from lack wild type, but not that from PSM alpha deficient uh, strain culture supernatant uh, induced I36 alpha uh, release from keratinocytes. So these results suggest that both uh, PSM alpha is important for uh, inducing keratinocytes to uh, Yes, to let that keratinocytes size to release I1 and I36 release in vitro. Okay, so to further confirm the role of PSM alpha in vivo, we colonize PSM alpha deficient strain and uh, normal lack white strain to the white time mice. And as you see here, uh, in PSM alpha deficient strain colonized white time mice showed significantly decreased skin formation compared to a white type mice, uh, which is colonized by lack of white type strain. So this result suggests that PSM alpha was essential for the skin formation of epicutaneous staph aureus colonization. So this is summary. PSM alpha is a key virulence factor in the skin formation of epicutaneous staph aureus colonization. Sorry. So in conclusion, uh, we found that in virulent phase, PSM alpha really, uh, staph aureus release PSM alpha peptides, uh, which damage keratinocytes and let them release I1 alpha and I36 alpha as an alignment. And these cytokines work uh, partially, work in an autocrine manner and exaggerate the information. And these alignment release uh, resulted in the production of I17 from Dharma gamma theta T cells and innate lymphoid cells. And these I17 consequently recruit neutrophils at the site and protect hosts from bacterial invasion. So this work was supported by all the collaborators here, and I especially want to appreciate the extraordinary mentorship from Dr. Yumi Nakamura 
and supervising from Dr. Hiroyuki Matsue in Chiba University. And I also want to appreciate uh, many experimental support from uh, Masanori Matsumoto and many advices from Gabriel Nunez in University of Michigan. And I personally supported from Chiba University leading graduate school program. And I appreciate Dr. Toshinori Nakayama, who was the head of this program. And finally, I want to thank you uh, again, uh, all the organizers and board members from ESDL and SID and JSID for supporting me uh, in traveling here and giving me this opportunity. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.